<laughs> no. It's just like bass fishing all over again. They take you right down into the weeds. That is, I mean, that, ah. Well, for what he was, he was a bigger fish. He was probably 30, 32 inches. Like, for out here, that's, that's pretty monstrous. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Hops and Outdoors YouTube channel. Today, we are out here on the uh, coolies in the kayak. This is probably the first video you guys are getting to see of it. Um, I've had it for a little while. We went up to Metagoshi, did a little bit. You guys might see some shorts from that trip, but I didn't really ever film a good video, so no video from it. And then we've been out here once or twice, or once, and then out to Laramore Dam twice, but uh, filmed a couple of times, and just Laramore is being Laramore and not producing, but. Yeah, we're out here. I'm going to be using a chatterbait today. See if we can't catch some pike on the old chatterbait. I had a lot of good luck up in Metagoshi with that. So uh, that is the bait of choice for today. Oddly enough, i seen a guy down here that was brave enough to take his boat down the trail to get in here. And if you know where I'm at, it is, uh, it's not an easy trail. I'm surprised that the traverse makes it. So, you know, more power to him, I guess. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get to fishing, and hopefully you guys get to watching. It is kind of windy out here today, for sure. So I don't know how that's going to bode for me, but... Got the uh, little chatterbait with a Yamamoto kind of swim deal behind it. Which doesn't do a whole lot of action on its own, but I find with the vibration of the chatterbait... It gets quite a bit, so hopefully, like I said, out on uh, Metagoshi, I had some pretty good luck with it. And I think also because it's got the flash value of the chatterbait, um, it is definitely looked looked at by Pike for sure. Also, last time I used it, I had a lot of good times. The Pike stealing my uh, trailer. So hopefully not too much of that today. I mean, I've got more than enough soft plastics, but that doesn't really mean I want to use all of them. Definitely have a fish on. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? Dude, and I think that one was a big one. Gosh dang it. Definitely not as big as that last one, but still a pike. Kind of let him fight himself out real quick. You done? I think that last fish was an actual big fish. Golly. This one's still not bad size though for uh, this body of water. Is further back in there than I would like, but it just pops right out. Boom. Beautiful little pike. Bad lighting, but beautiful pike. Get it. Well, he released himself. I was going to get a better release shot of him. 
And surprisingly, I still have my, <laughs> my soft plastic, which pike fishing, those are just generally a uh, consumable item at that point. See if I can get myself turned here. That chatterbait definitely somewhat works as a windsock, but not well enough. It's funny too, because when they bite it, it's almost always like they're chasing behind it when they strike, because it uh, you don't even... It's not like a, a spoon bite where they kind of swipe at it and it's fish on immediately. Also, I think the treble hooks kind of aid in that. With with the single hook on a bass style bait, you really, really have to get a good hook set. Like if you don't, you're kind of SOL. There we go. That's a fish. Holy cow. He is really down. I'm glad I got that 50 pound line. He's not big, but he just put himself in those weeds. My goodness. <laughs> he's not big, but he's powerful. That's for sure. some of these weeds here real quick and this is oh he knocked my thing off there look how easy it is to get these fish oh well no that one got himself he definitely got himself good but that's how easy it was to get that thing out of it which is kind of not what you want, but I mean, he's still probably 24 inches. He's not massive by any means, but still a beautiful little pike, especially to be catching on bass lures. There he goes, just, oh gosh dang it. All right, now I gotta get myself out of this predicament, which is blowing into the reeds. And then I gotta get another soft plastic tied on. I think the soft plastic is the only thing that half ass makes that thing. Weedless. I would kind of like to get some underwater footage from a bait just to see what, I wish I had like a little line camera or something. That I could put just above my steel leader to see what it looks like when these pike hit. Cause I know it's gotta be freaking crazy. This side would actually be pretty decent to walk on. Seen a little bluegill, some little bait fish. I wouldn't doubt majority of the bluegill and the bait fish. Oh, there's one. Oh, I think those are little bass. I think it would be hard with the amount of pike that are in these things for bass to make it to maturity. If you could get a little. Oh, so many little scattered bait fish. Dude, I've never seen the slough this way before. Where I'm like sitting on top of it and I can see down into it with my glasses. And it's crazy. 
I love it. I wish I had a little GoPro that I could just mount underwater in my kayak. I think that would actually be a really cool view. If you guys think that'd be a cool view and something you'd be interested in seeing, let me know. And uh, there must have been a little pike right there or something. Let me know and that might be something I might actually be able to make happen. I'm just infatuated with seeing this thing this way though. I will say that much. All sorts of little, little bait fish darting around in just ultra clear water. Dude, there must have been a pike or something up here. Or start working this thing like a wake bait, honestly. Might also be the go. I think that would also get crazy performance. Again. That time he got it. Dude, that pike hit me three times. He's not even a bad little pike either. Come on, go crazy. Do your thing. I don't want to get bitter hooked. I think he ran a lot of energy trying to get that bait. Oh. <laughs> kind of Nope. I think he broke the steel leader. Yeah, must have. Bent it for sure. Okay, open your mouth. I want my, hey, I want my paddle tail back. Open up. he opened his mouth, he'd make my life a lot easier right now. Be able to pull that straight back. Hopefully this fish doesn't end up blind. But still, like a nice little pike. I don't think he'll end up blinded, which is good. And good release on that little guy. Let's see what damage he did here. Nah, he didn't break the steel eater, he just bent it pretty good. And for those of you that ever wonder why I am the way I am with pike. Well, that's that's the reason. Because I think it'll still rock, honestly. Paddle tail. Sorry, a little ADHD there. But you get them up before they're ready, and they'll go ballistic. You're either going to hurt you or you're going to hurt the fish. And it's just not a good thing either way. Be all right. As it just rockets. that bait out there. With it not being quite as stiff though, you definitely do lose some of that, uh, oh, that's a lot smaller pike. That is just a little baby guy. There's a seal. Just gotta do his little little dance, not trying to hurt him. Not trying to hurt me and not trying to break break my swivel on that thing. Just a little guy. Maybe. And I honestly think it might be more ethical to fish these fish with a treble. The way that the, the single hook just tears him up. There we go. Beautiful little guy. Ah! I tried to release him, I swear. There you go. <laughs> okay. 
trying to reposition myself here. Key break. Because I just seen some bait fish running because they were getting chased. And I am not one to waste opportunities for top water. As much as I know for a fact I'm not going to catch as many fish doing it, I am uh, not going to waste the opportunity to catch a single fish doing it. And it's not even that I won't catch as many fish doing it because it catches fish fairly well. It's just hookup ratio isn't always there. Because, I don't know, I guess pike can't see as well as you'd think. Which, who'd have guessed when you're running a huge steel leader and they don't see that, but... Dude, that was the second it hit. Keep them out of the weeds. I can hear the weeds on my line right now. Oh my goodness, he's down there. Golly. Golly. God, this might be a bigger fish. No, I just have a whole damn forest with him. He can't even move. <laughs> a whole, whole forest with this little pike. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> That's your fault. I didn't want all these weeds with you. Now, can you get them off my line? Go ballistic. Do some stuff. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can get in here. I'm not. There we go. <laughs> no. It's just like bass fishing all over again. They take you right down into the weeds. That is, I mean, that, ah. Well, for what he was, he was a bigger fish. He was probably 30, 32 inches. Like, for out here, that's, that's pretty monstrous. But, uh, Unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see him too well. The second he knew that hook was out of him, he uh, he bolted off kind of quick. Man, he struck well, though. I will say that much. All right, I'm going to get turned and repositioned. He kind of pulled me out of where I wanted to be. Cause he he, <laughs> he dove down real quick. Man, and in the temp. Oh. This can't be too big of a fish. Ah, uh, he's still a little bigger. I think I just. Yeah, that drag is really tight right now. That's probably better. Oh, he choked it though. Holy cow. That's going to be fun. Thank you, guys. I don't... You know, all the rules I have disobeyed. My own rules today. You know your pike's big when you can bolt flip them. hooked back in there just judging by the fact that he can't really but yeah, I need into this other playing with you buddy I am trying to get you off alive because you are not big enough for me to want to eat you all right 
beautiful little pike, all that. I gotta get him back in the water. I don't know what his odds of survival are, but they're not good. Oh, God damn it. I bet he comes back up right underneath me. He swam off, which is a good thing. He's still got energy. And I don't think I broke his gill plates, but yeah, he's coming back up. So without a little bit of help here, he's probably not going to make it, or at least a little bit of motivation. Ah, he flipped back over. I just watched him do that. Kind of stay in this area and make sure he doesn't come back up anywhere. Just the way that he bit and then came back for it as I kind of paused is what screwed him. I don't see him coming back up, which is a good thing. It means he's afraid that I'm going to touch him again and he's going to stay down. I don't like to maim fish when I don't have to, and having a, play, a pair of players would have definitely prevented a lot of what just happened there. But I don't know where my pair of players went. Oh, I should have gotten another pair, but I did not, <laughs> unfortunately. Luckily, I'm resourceful enough to see the hook on my other bait and try to use that because I think if I was using spoons or anything else today, that fish would not have been, he, he wouldn't have left the kayak. I probably would have had to take him home, which I just didn't want to do because he was small. The one before him, maybe, him, no. It always kind of makes me nervous when they don't wake up because it's like this pike pretty much came his whole way out and didn't fight at all. Well, what's he going to do when he gets over here? And I'm surprised the answer isn't fight a whole lot more. I, I think it might just be because this water is a little bit... Um, What you call it? Just a little bit hot for them. And they're not fighting quite as hard as they normally would. I mean, the water out here is probably 80 degrees. And pike are definitely a cold water fish. But right after I said that, bye, pike. I really wish I had gotten to show him to you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate when that happens, but also when they're opening their mouth and closing their mouth and doing all sorts of funky stuff, I'm not going to try to grab them. Especially because you kind of got to grab them by the head. And uh, I don't have gloves on. That's not my best option. I am going to try this underspin for a minute. I think, I think we done went and proved that... Uh-oh. I about to say, where did that pike go with that underspin? That the uh, chatterbait was definitely productive for pike. But I just want to see, for my own reasons, whether or not this chatterbait actually produces. Or not chatterbait, but uh, underspin. I know the second I hit this weed edge, I'm gonna get all sorts of tagged by a pike. 
on the underspin too. Oh. <laughs> Get out of there. Yep. Oh, he's a little bit bigger too. Oh, I think I foul hooked him. I might just switch the side of that rod is on. Because I always go to set my pipe or er, my rod back to this side. Yes, go ballistic out there. Get all those weeds off. Ooh, you are barely hooked. Hold on. Let's actually not lose you because I let you go ballistic. Because you are just a beautiful, the pike is the, ah, is the last one. <laughs> He's not happy though. I'll tell you that. He's not having it. Okay. And dude, barely hooked. Which is good because it means a quick release, but. Just a. Beautiful specimen. Love pike. Into the water he goes. Oh, he cracked the tip of that bait, but I think that'll be okay. Didn't tear my tail off, which is always a good thing. This thing actually matches up. This, uh, this little bait right here matches up to the little bait fish that I was seeing earlier. So I think that this should actually be a fairly decent bait. Because it, I mean, it matches the hatch. That's always a good thing. I don't know why I just tried to do that after I just made that bait weedless. Okay, reel that up. Let's get repositioned. I was, I was gonna use those that weed line to pull myself further up the bank too. That was my whole plan: is to try to drag the weedless bait into the weeds, so that I could. Uh, get myself further this way and kind of fight the wind a little bit without having to actively paddle that pike said he made sure i didn't have to do all that extra work all right three cast i'm calling it one Bunch of weeds, nice. And oh. okay. I go two. What the heck? That one doesn't count. The bait was messed up the whole retrieve, okay? Gosh dang it. That time too. Two half cast, two make a cast. I'll count that one. Unbelievable. You know, you, you really think you know a group of fish and then they just go and don't perform for you. Like, I know they're here. I know they are. All right, I'm gonna start paddling back that way. 
because even though I'm far closer to my car here, I don't understand the reason that they have the bolt ramp where they have it here. But there has to be a reason for it. Maybe it's just because the cattails weren't that thick there. I don't know. Let me just tell you right now though, these weeds are no joke. No joke. I know I said that was my last cast, but I'm moving in the right direction so I can keep casting. Right, that's how this works. Oh. Dude, I certainly got hit. Oh, he stole my tail. Oh, this bait's not going to even work without a tail. <sighs> okay, he made it my last cast. Could I throw a chatterbait on? Yes. Is it really freaking tempting? Yes. Am I going to do it? Possibly. Where's zero crankbait? I don't want to deal with treble hooks in a pike's mouth right now. I don't have, after dealing with that one fish, I don't have the the players to deal with him right now. So I won't throw on my popper or anything like that. Just going to call it. And if I get my truck running early enough tomorrow or get it close enough early enough tomorrow to where all I need is the shift cable, I'll be back out here. Goals. Goal setting. I would never say it was my strong suit, but I I can do it. Possibly. Alright guys. I will say that is the end of another successful video out here. I didn't catch too many of them. It wasn't like normal. But, uh, I caught enough. I, I'm happy with what I caught. I mean, I got hit quite a bit more. I think if I was rocking a spoon, I probably would have been a little better off. But, uh, <sighs> glad I wasn't rocking a spoon. Because I probably wouldn't have fingers right now trying to get hooks out of their mouths. Cause... Bro, what is that? There's something swimming on top of the water right there. me and said no way but uh yeah another successful video out here thank you guys for watching like comment and uh as always follow your dreams it was like i always say there ain't nobody else that's gonna follow them for you and you who knows maybe you get to be out here doing something like this on a picture perfect night just perfect temperatures i could not complain maybe a little less wind i mean but that's it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Stay in tune. Believing in what I do. It means everything to me. So, But without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. And uh, stay fishing.